speaking of projects, I think this is a good uh, chance to kind of segue into, I think you probably more than anyone right now at Community Funded has really been, uh, you know, side by side with a lot of these projects um, in the trenches, so to speak, just seeing the cycles of funding and, you know, the, the emotional roller coaster, the funding, you know, trends, things like that. Can you maybe um, sort of take us through uh, a community funded project kind of from its inception as just an idea, maybe all the way through um, the successful funding of it? Yeah, and I think uh, the way you led into that is is right on. The the project begins even before you hit the launch button, I think, is what people need to realize in this process. Uh, it really begins with, uh, you know, with your idea and coming to the site and starting your application process. You know, how this should work is you, you fill out your application, you submit it to us. We do a, a two-step review process. Uh, one of us starts and then uh, if they like it, they submit it on to the other person. And so we get a double layer of review to make sure it, it all looks and, and, and feels right. What you got to say to yourself is <clears throat> the average uh, pledge on any crowdfunding site right now is around $75 a pledge, right? So you got to, I mean, it's some math again. Yeah, uh, you're you're gonna do some quickie math on your your network. What do you think your network looks like? If you were gonna so, sort of lay out who you know, what you think that next layer might be that you could connect with potentially there, multiply that number by seventy five and see where you're at. And if you're not at a, a good starting point, if you're not at a good place to begin this, or at least a good healthy chunk of the way, you know you need to do something more, right? I mean, if you've got the five hundred dollar project. You know, that's not very many $75 pledges that yeah. you need. And so, <clears throat> you're, like you said, your network might be of substantial size at that point in time. But, but if, if you're, you're going for the for... six-figure number uh, <laughs> for a project, which... Or I even, mean, you know, a $25,000 project, $50,000 project, I think you're right. If you were to sit down and really say, who do I know will give me money? Yeah. Um, you know, who do I, who can I count on to at least spread the word and really engage? You could get kind of a rough ballpark number of the number of people you can expect to see pledging on days one through 10 or yep. whatever. And if that is, you know, putting you in somewhere around $3,000 and even a $50,000 goal, I mean, that should probably be a good, um, you know, wake up that you need a lot more preparation or you need to readjust what it is that you're, that Absolutely. you're planning to do. Absolutely. I mean, it's, that's exactly it is. You've got to be real with yourself. I mean, this is, you've, this is the only way you can be successful at this is you've got to be honest with yourself. This is not money that's falling from the sky. And then once your project has been submitted, we, we admin approve you and give you a launch button in your project management section. And just because you have the launch button <laughs> does not mean you have to push the launch button right then and there. That just means now you know for sure your project can be on community funded anytime you want your project to be on community funded. So stop for a second. Start <laughs> building your social capital. That's a critical piece of this. You've got to have that network built ahead of time. You've got to have that plan of attack for when, when you hit launch, the time is ticking. And that's what people have to yeah. realize is you're, not, you're never going to have any extra time. The, every moment from there forward, it's less time, less time, less time, less time. So you've got to do all of that prep ahead of time. And you need to really start getting out and you need to push the, you know, start telling people that, you know, 10 days from now, 30 days from now, my project is going to launch. It doesn't, it, I mean, those timelines are real. That's, uh, I think uh, you're maybe going with the example that I was, uh, I, I was talking about where a gentleman who actually teaches a Kickstarter course, a crowdfunding course at his university, um, has seen an 80% success rate in his students' projects. And the one common piece between all of them is a three month lead in with a media PR campaign push before, before they, the project even starts. Exactly, before the project even starts. You got to get people excited about this. This is, a, it's an event. It's, that's what you have to remind yourself of is this is an event. And just like any other event, when, you know, when New West Fest comes to town or whatever your event is in your, your city, you don't hear about it five minutes before it starts, right? You hear about that event three months ahead of time, yeah. hyping you and getting you excited for the music. And or the food, and the, 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 the buzz. chili, whatever it's yeah. going to be. I mean, that's how you get people from all around your region to come to this event. Otherwise, that, it's not. It doesn't have well, the same Well, that brings effect. up an interesting point because I think a lot of the project starters coming in, you know, they're average people with average social networks. They have their immediate friends and family, and you know, maybe their business contacts. But it sounds like to really have 
you know, to elevate you into those 80% or more success rates that you have to do some legwork in terms of making new friends or I mean how would you uh... making new friends I would say connecting with uh, you know your local news outlets starting to starting to get your story out there in a lot of different ways I think people people are uh, used to seeing articles and papers and uh, articles in general and think that it it was just a one-time interview and a one-time sit down a, a good article uh, is usually multiple stages yeah it, it begins with the beginning of your story it has a middle and it has an end and so don't think that you don't have enough excitement to go start talking to local news outlets. The classic number we also hear is 80 to 90 percent, no matter what crowdfunding site you use, 80 to 90 percent of the traffic that you generate is to your project has to be generated by you, the project creator. Yeah. I think a part of my mission in this is to try to make that percentage drop so that more projects can be successful without maybe needing that huge network uh, at the very beginning. It's definitely never going to end as far as a valuable piece you have I, to have. Because what I think about now is, um, you know, you've brought up two statistics that kind of go hand in hand. On one hand, only 5% of people have ever heard of crowdfunding at all. And on the other hand, probably the ones that have heard of it have heard of it through these you know, media stories that talk about, you know, a million dollars raised in a day or these kind of just, oh, yeah. you know, almost and those magical are the, yeah. just And those are the exceptions, of, not the rules, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Those are the ones that get people excited and somebody wants to write a story about it. But the reality is, is though that's not the average project on any website. The average project is not a million dollar boom project. Uh, you know, it's the interesting thing is, is these, you know, these projects are generally more in the, you know, Eight to twelve thousand dollar range is kind of your average yeah. size of a project, you know, and you kind of fluctuate a little bit above and below that, like you were talking about, based upon your network size and those pieces. But you know, the it, yeah, the stories that people have heard are, are definitely make making people think that money is falling out of yeah, the sky. Yeah, I, mean, I know that we've seen some projects just come through, and it has kind of reflected that um, misconception. I think that someone has a good idea. And I mean, good ideas really, I mean, what we're trying to do is make good ideas almost more valuable than money in a sense that, you know, if you have a good idea and a good community that's ready to support you, that it doesn't matter whether you, you know, are a wealthy person or just your, you know, everyday blue collar well, person that's... that you have now the potential to get to that goal. Yeah. But, but that said, I mean... It's if you, if sweat you, equity, man. I, that's yeah. what I, I mean. I really feel like sweat we've, equity. So the amount you put in is the amount you get out. That's where we've. I've. I. That's one of the things that I love about this is really. That to me is an opportunity that I wish that I'd had a lot, over a lot of ideas yeah. in my life. Is I've never been shy about the fact that I don't have a lot of money to put into something, but I've got all the sweat equity you could ever want. Yeah. If it's something I believe in, I will lose sleep. I will work hard on this to make it a reality. But before and that's sweat, what we did with community funding. yeah, <laughs> before sweat equity wasn't enough, and now it's you're really given an opportunity to. I think community funded makes sweat equity actually have value because it, you can work hard. And what you know, what we're talking about right now doesn't cost money, right? The PR stuff yeah. and these pieces, Facebook, you know, the, yeah. yeah, the social networking, all of these pieces. Nothing that we're talking about is. A, it, I, I, we said, oh, this costs us this much to get this done. No, we haven't said that at all during yeah. this whole piece because it's it's about your drive to go out and do it and sell yourself a little bit but also just make the connections that you need to make and and have a strong message and that you're willing to share I think, share share i think some people are just you know put off by hard work i think the payoff is definitely there and i, I really think that um, what we're kind of talking about is that uh you're really setting the bar for how hard you're going to have to work ultimately i mean if you set you know, if you look at what your end goal is that you want to accomplish, and maybe that's opening up a facility somewhere with all of this, all of these different components, if you set that as your first goal, I mean, yeah, it's possible, but that's a lot more work than it's going to be to kind of bring that kind of down to earth and figure out what do I need, what is the first good step towards that end goal, and kind of almost break it into manageable yeah. projects that you can raise five grand here to do this part of it, and then raise, you know. I was just talking with a project creator the other day, and they did, you know, that's a, a brilliant point that we've talked about many times, and I don't know if we've ever shared it enough uh, with people, which is. Your community-funded project doesn't have to be the only community-funded project yeah. you ever do, right? <laughs> this is not a one-time deal here. We're not trying to make this 
get everything you moon, yeah yeah or feel bad and go yeah, away. yeah. The, like you said, I mean, break it into manageable steps. What do you need next to accomplish the next big push in your project? I think Charlie Bars is a great example of somebody who, if Charlie wanted to, I mean, Charlie's ideal situation is a factory with, yeah. you know, workers and people, you know, little, uh, you know, little pushings or whatever, I mean, yeah. you know, like working and doing his Charlie <laughs> Bar bidding for him, right? But the reality is, is that's not his next logical step. And, and he knew what his next step was and what he needed to, to make that leap to where and, he And did. his whole project, as successful and amazing as it was, was getting him out of the basement of one facility into another facility that was more suited to his needs with his own space. Yeah. So it was a very modest increase, but it, it allowed him and his organization to grow in the way that he couldn't have done. That's exactly without. it. And that's where I think it's, it, people have to, yeah, that's a great point. People have to remind themselves that really you can have as many community funded projects as you want. And the key is make them manageable and knock them out of the park each time. Yeah. Right. Because then you're building that social capital for the next time. If you've got one project that you did everything perfect on, if Charlie comes through, I mean, you've already seen all the posts on Facebook of people who are excited about the Charlie Bar yeah, gear that I've they got seeing from Charlie them. Bar shirts around town. And yeah. I mean, I even heard that since his project, his sales like doubled or yeah. more than yeah. doubled just because the awareness of his product was out there which is just you know another huge side effect of having a successful project is you get hundreds of people talking about it and then wearing your products yeah. and they basically are now you know endorsing you well, he's he's got he's got now a network of people who have come yeah. to the site that have seen his project because it was successful he's got a bunch of people who have seen that he raised the money that he was going to raise and he did what he said he was going to do with it, right? He's going to—he's moving out of the basement of mugs. He gave all the gift backs in a timely fashion to everyone who got one. I mean, his social capital couldn't be any huger yeah. than it is right now. And that's perfect because now the next time he goes to a project, like you said, he's doubled his sales. He has a whole new network of people that he didn't have for the first project that are going to be able to come to the second one, look and see how amazing the first one went, and they're, they're not going to second guess the fact that if yes. he did it once, he can do it again. And that's where you start, you know, that's how you build, build, build.